Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, thank you for inviting me to this conference. And uh, yeah, I'm Yok Ling. So yeah, I'm, uh, I will be uh, sharing on uh, our service, uh, the Huami uh, Dementia Care System, and how we um, have been helping uh, people with dementia and their family members. Yeah, and I think most of the time when we have uh, people, uh, we know people with dementia, and we will probably ask, mm, how, how, do we, um, how do we work with them? How do we understand them? I think this is a, a, a very big challenge to uh, all of us. And I, so this, this sharing, I hope to uh, share some lights on how we can connect with uh, people with dementia and how do, how do we become a bridge between uh, people with dementia and their family members or the caregivers. Okay. Um, yeah, so we built the bridge uh, of empathy. Uh, between people uh, living with dementia and their caregivers. Um, why do I say we are the bridge of empathy? Um, I think most of the time when, uh, when uh, just now the, the previous presenter, uh, Kaden, was saying that when the doctor you know, told, told him that he has cancer, he was actually in a blank, you know, the mind was blank. You know, and he, didn't, he doesn't, didn't know what to do or he just blank. I think same with people, you know, when People, in doc the doctors, when they told the family members that their loved ones has dementia, I think they also, their minds also went blank. Like, what to do? Oh, God, what's next? How do I relate with this person anymore? How do I connect with this person anymore? You know, so, so and, and, and you know, caregivers also have a lot of their, uh, their, their life, uh, their life routines and all this, and this, all this have to change. And when all these changes are taking place, you know, they will have to make sure they have to, you know, know learn new skills, how to communicate and connect. And sometimes you know, it takes so much uh, for, for this to be taking place and, and just, we just don't understand and don't know how to do it. Right. So, and for us, we, uh, we hope that our service will be able to provide them with a little bit of tips and, and suggestions. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the Huawei Dementia Care System it's an initiative that's launched to engage the, um, the, the people with dementia and their family members, uh, caregivers, in their own home. So we do home interventions. Yeah? So we go to their homes uh, to provide care. So we work in a team of the doctor, nurse, and social worker. So it's like a three-in-one, you know? So, yeah. And we believe that uh, healthcare, healthcare is not just uh, coming from the medical aspect or the medical component. It also has the components of the nursing functions, functional, and also a psychosocial. So that's very important for a holistic healthcare service. Yeah. And the um, HOMI DCS uh, is therefore we work as a team and that comprise of a doctor, social worker and the nurse. And also we have dementia care program assistants who are the people who so called like a uh, you know, they, they, they are called program assistants, but I think they, their job actually is more than uh, just program assistants. They are supposed to go into the homes and then engage the person with dementia with activities. And um, they're not just engaging them with activities, you know, to pass time, to occupy their time, but actually their job is more into like, you know, understanding how they, how the people with dementia, how they communicate, how they function, what is what is that for us to make sure to draw them out of the shell and to actually make their life uh, meaningful? So we believe that people with dementia uh, has the right to still have a very meaningful life. And there, there is, there, uh, it's possible for them to have a very meaningful life. So we provide a holistic assessment of the person with uh, the medical, social and emotional needs. So it's a very uh, 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 biosocial approach. And also we, uh, we have a continuous care with the person uh, uh, doing, giving uh, with uh, the program assistance to engage them. And also to, uh, we, are, we also engage the caregivers to, to enhance everybody's uh, psychosocial well-being. Right? And we do all the necessary uh, coordination and linkages of services. Yeah? So what does this uh, multidisciplinary team uh, look out for? I think first of all, first, first of all, we do a lot of, uh, we, well, when we have a 
person with dementia refer to us, we will definitely screen for any kind of physiological discomfort. And then we go into the environmental hindrance, and then we go into the emotional distress. Why I say that? Because I think many of us would understand that uh, when a person with dementia, when they come to you uh, in certain responses, we will sort of, you know, say that we, we can't understand what they're trying to say. Because for people with dementia, sometimes they have a lot of difficulty in, uh, in their verbal expressions. So if they have difficulty in verbal expressions, they, it will become a kind of a behavior issue for many of us. Right? Later I'll show you why and how. And when they have, actually when they have, uh, uh, when they have difficulty in expressing uh, and we don't understand, we will think that they're being difficult. Okay, but actually, they are, I think they are, for, for anyone who has dementia or non-dementia, when you have a behavior, you always have a reason behind the behavior. Same for people with dementia. Okay. So um, how we work is that if, let's say, a person with uh, dementia comes to you and they have a behavior issue, we'll screen for any physiological discomfort. So I think uh, many of you will have experienced that. Uh, for an uh, older person, if they have constipation, it is always the number one, I call, I call it the number one, the number one trigger of a lot of behavior issues. So, but the person with dementia, they can't tell you that he or she has constipation. They can only come to you, maybe they will be very anxious, they'll keep calling you, they keep calling the family members, or they will you know, repeat the question again, again, again. Okay, but if we don't understand their anxiety, we think this, this, uh, this is very difficult, difficult uh, behavior. But behind that, there might be some kind of uh, discomfort the person is experiencing, but can't tell you. So we screen that out first, right? So if after we screen that out, and okay, there's no physical discomfort. Is there any other things that's bothering the person, triggering the behavior? And then we will talk about with, with screen, is there any environmental distress or emotional distress? Okay. So I think the key issues here is that the person with dementia, their verbal ability and, and behavioral responses is how we have to learn to in, in terms of communication and connection. And then when we know all these things, and we, can, we will know how, how to support the caregiver. Uh, okay, so this is what I'm going to show that uh, people living with dementia. This is what uh, this is my when I work with people with dementia. This is what I come across. Okay? This is uh, the usual kind of conversation uh, in in them. Okay, person with dementia, they'll say, "Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm feeling not quite right. A little pain. Uh, sorry, sorry. Let me go stand, go stand. The little clouds here, right? Uh, I do the, this thing." The little clouds here, okay, these are some of the hints I get. Okay. So the little clouds here, the, this is the caregiver, the clouds are the caregiver or the family members or anyone outside in the public, yeah? They'll say, oh, why is she so dirty? Ask her to shower, but she doesn't want to listen. I think this is quite typical of uh, uh, when, you, when you encounter a person in the family with a person living with dementia and then their family members. This, the, the caregiver will always say, oh, this, this person doesn't want to shower, it's very dirty. Okay. Ask her to shower so many, ask her to shower, but she doesn't want to listen. Okay. And then the other caregiver will say, oh, why is he screaming about going home? This, isn't this daycare supposed to make him feel better? I think some of us will... In the daycare setting, we will also hear a lot of people with dementia wanting to go home. Like they want to go home and go home. You know? And then the other one would be, oh, what is she doing now? She's banging her head on the wall. Okay? This is what I have come across in my work with people with dementia. And then these are the some of the things that we found. Okay? For this one, what is she doing now? She's banging her head on the wall, right? Actually, this person with dementia is like that. I'm feeling not quite right. A little pain on the left side of my body. And this one, why is he screaming about going home? I don't like this place. Why is this person trying to tell me? And why is she talking so loud? I want to go home. This is a daycare setting 
when you know when maybe in a daycare setting, certain daycares they are not really equipped to deal with people with dementia, so sometimes they talk a little bit loud. And the third one, uh, the, the this one, why is she so dirty, right? Don't want to shower. I don't want to shower as I'm not sure what to do in the bathroom. And the place they told me does not even look like a bathroom. So you will ask me, how do I find out from? How do I know, right? How do I know? How do we know? How does, how does my team know? For this instance, okay, let me check. Okay. For this instance, uh, the, not quite right, this one, uh, uh, when she's banging her head on the wall, uh, she, this lady, she's 80 plus, she lives with her, uh, uh, okay, <laughs> she lives with her, her helper, and, and, uh, and, and then she was banging her head on the wall, you know? so the, the daughter called, they have a video camera there, and so the, uh, the, the daughter called me, and I went down to the place, and she was really banging the head on the wall, and I, I, I spent uh, about an hour and just soothing her, you know, talking to her, and you know, just sayang her. Okay? And after that hour, she said, she come down, and she said, oh, you, you are a very nice person. Of course, I, she has forgotten who I am, but it's okay. Hey, you are a very nice person, you know, you are a very nice person. Uh, you, you, you please go home now, because it's dark. And, and I said, it's okay, I can stay on. She said, yeah, uh, you can go home. I'm, I'm just, I'm okay. I'm just ha having this right, left pain. This pain on my life, left side of the body. And I look at her. Oh, I didn't remember. She has a pacemaker. And she has a pacemaker. <laughs> and there's a left side pain, okay? So, or oh, alarm, <laughs> all right. So I, I call up my... My nurse, we work in a team, right? So I called my nurse, and my nurse came down and found out that with the ECG machine, and it was found that she has a bit of a cardiac arrest, actually. Yeah. So then we called the ambulance, and they sent her to the hospital. Lah. So okay, lah. she's okay, yeah. <laughs> so that, that's how, you know, uh, when we spend time, like I think in the earlier presentations, a lot of people are saying, some pre presenters earlier on were saying, being present is very important. Right? And, and we just bring present. When you are present with the person, you can understand. Right? So that's how we, 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 we work with the person with dementia. And, and, and then this one. Yeah. Oh, hey, she's so dirty. Don't want to shower. Actually, um, yeah. For people with dementia, they actually have, many times they have forgotten the, the steps to, to, take a, to do something, to take a shower, to, to, to make a Milo, you know, a Milo. Because there's so many steps involved in showering, right? So they can't, can't remember. So, you know, can't remember. It's not that they purposely don't want to shower. They just can't remember certain steps. And when they can't remember certain steps, it makes them feel anxious. So they're anxious. I don't want to do it. Just don't do it. Okay. All right. So time constraint. Uh, pali pali. Okay. So how do we work with people with dementia in the sense that um, there are two realms of reality, I would say. Our realm and their realm. Okay. So our realm is we have the all the socialized norms, language and judgments. No, this is what we have, lah, right? We've been conditioned with. But uh, when they, uh, for people in dementia, is that it's here, right? They, they, they have memories, but in patches. They can, sometimes they can, they, they, they can oh, tell you certain things, but sometimes they can't. And, 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 and for us, I think, um, how do we connect? I think the most important thing is how do we connect? How do we connect with, with uh, people who are different? You know, who, who are people who are different from us. It's not that um, for us we are very we are we, we know how we we are so used to our way of talking. We are so used to our own way of of thinking that we actually uh, have neglect or neglected the the ways of other people who may want to use a different way to communicate and to connect. So this is how you know we will we need to the key issue is how do we connect. So for, for us with DCS, in Huawei DCS, 
we will have to so-called lay aside our own socialized realities uh, that we know and live in and begin to step into the realities uh, of the other person, the person with dementia. And, and it is us, actually, it is us ourselves that we need to shift our mindset to see beyond. Okay? Oh, sorry. So, a um, couple of slides left. Uh, I think about seven minutes left or six minutes. Okay, so these are some of the examples. This lady, I did the one that banged the wall, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So this is how, this is my experience with her. I say, Amma, are you okay? No, no, Amma, right? So, yeah, this is some of the things that I, I, we, we went through, we talked to her, talked to her, okay? Yeah, and then the other one, um, yeah, she doesn't want to shower. So these are the steps of showering, no? Number one, you must know how where the place to shower, right? Number two, step two, must know how to close the door, no? Step three, must this and that. Step four, must this and that. Step five, you, I think all of us have taken for granted how many steps <laughs> in our life to do something. And then, you know, in the middle of step one to step five, maybe we forget step three, right? Yeah. So this is actually very, um, for the person with dementia, this is very, 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 I would say, very um, important, yet they forget, and then they will so-called uh, be, be very upset with themselves for forgetting. Yeah. This one is a daycare. Yeah, this one is a very interesting case because the daycare, the daycare thing, uh, and she wants to go home. Okay? And, and the staff was unable to stop her from going home, and the family was very upset. And I say, okay, let's, let's go and have a chit chat. Tell me more about yourself. You seem to have a lot of life experience, you know. And he said, yeah, you know, I know how to read newspaper and I know how to do math, even though I don't have formal education. Okay, so from there, I went on. Okay, let's do math. Let's do mathematics. Let's, let's read the newspaper together. And then after that, we engaged for a while. She sort of forgot that she needs to go home. So we do other things and it sort of brings her a lot of smiles because she is, this person, he is very proud of, of being able to do mathematics even though he didn't go to school, you know. So you know, from there we catch on to his strength, catch on on his strength and, his, uh, and, and the possibility of him to do it and yeah, he did it and he was very, very proud of himself. So, as, so, so the thing is about the caregiver, the last slide I have. Um, I want to talk a little bit about caregiver because I think caregiver of any person, and as also especially for a person with dementia, the caregiver is undergoing a lot of changes in his or her life. You know, it's total change because you need to shift, you need to alter, you need to uh, uh, yeah, alter your whole lifestyle in a sense. And, and your caregiving is not just uh, caregiving for, for one day. But it is like for 24 hours, you know, seven days a week, that kind of thing. So, and you imagine your previous lifestyle has to stop or change. Or you, make, you have to make a lot of alterations. And, and, and you have to, you know, re rework your schedule again. Redo things again. And then you relearn things again. It's a total change. I think this is very difficult for many, many of us and especially for caregivers for people with dementia. So the caregivers also have multiple roles and responsibilities, not only as a caregiver. They have roles as a, let's say if it's a lady, has a, it has a role of a daughter or, or son, okay? or you, have, you, have, you also have a role of, of your, as an employee <laughs> or employer. You also have a role of husband, wife. You also have a role of, uh, you know, the... It's a lot of roles, not just a caregiver, not just a person caring for the person with dementia. So many, many things. And so many responsibilities in life, you know. Right. Yeah. So, and also the caregiver to the person with dementia might be undergoing a process of loss, of grief, and huge change and impact. Loss and grief, sometimes you, we work with a lot of uh, uh, caregivers who are uh, uh, children, they, or spouse even, they, 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 they have this sense of loss that I cannot connect anymore to this person. This person is so strange. He's a stranger now. So they have lost, they have lost a parent. 
even when the parent is still living, you know, still walking around, all these things. Right? Yeah, so that's a great loss. And also caregivers to, um, yeah, to the person with dementia go through new management skills. La, you know, very totally, very unfamiliar unfam you know, in comparison to... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, differences in there, but you know, they, they will go through new management, la, new skills, la, they will learn new communication, new things. And then dementia could be a long process with different stages. Right, as you know, now the, of course the three main stages is the mild, moderate, the advanced. But you know, in between, in between there are a lot of different things, right? So you know, people, the caregivers have to go through the different stages, and 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 in different stages there will be different challenges, different new things to learn. Yeah, so that is the the, the process of you know this condition. So so with that, when we work with the people with dementia, we will try to the the, the main thing is connection. How do we connect with them? And how do we understand how they make connection with us? And from there, we can you know, work with the caregivers and, and, and offer our tips and you know, how to communicate, how to connect. And, and hopefully, we uh, will build this bridge between the, the every, every parties. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much, Yotling. We actually have a question already. Uh, I was bringing from the conference room from Vikash. Now, his question to Yok Ling is, he's a geriatrician and a medical director of the geriatric psychiatric unit in the US. And he's wondering over here in Singapore, do you do early screening for the elderly for early dementia before it gets too bad? Because they do start uh, the screening over there in the US and they start treatment early. Um, I, I, think, uh, for, I think this is catching up now. Uh, but I think screening or, or, or screening is actually, uh, I think in, in our context here, it's really up to the, the, the person you know, who, who, who wants to have a screening done. And I, 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 at the moment, please call me if around, there are a lot of doctors here. <laughs> so uh, uh, but what, what, what we have experienced is that the, 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 I have one particular gentleman who is in his 50s, very early, very, very early. And he, he was, there were some issues of memory lapses and all these things, but it, it, they, they just don't want to go, go for a screening. And they simply will say, oh, I, there's not, nothing wrong with that. Sorry, when you say they, do you mean him, himself, or his family and him? Him, him. Him himself, yeah, him okay. himself, yeah. So, and, and, and then it goes on. It goes on until when a couple of years later, and it was really obvious. Then the family saw that it's something really, really wrong and they sort of, you know, coax him to do a screening. But I think in our context here, it's really up to the person who wants to do a screening or not. Yes. Mm. So it's still the decision of the person. Yes. The family then, we can't compel mm -hmm. the person to go for screening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got another question from the conference room. So the question is, how to deal with patient with dementia that exhibit violence? For example, if they point knife at you, that's what. Let's take that first. Uh, okay. Um, I think ev that, okay, we when a person with dementia they get what we call aggressive. Let's say, okay, uh, let me use the word aggressive. If they get aggressive, ag there is always a reason behind the action. The behind the behavior, there might be a trigger. There might be a trigger. Somebody might have, you know, talked to them in a way that they are not happy and they want to respond. They respond in that way, right? And for people with dementia, you know, we, uh, a lot of times I believe that they use a lot of their, their instinct, instinctive responses. Okay? Their response is, if I'm angry, I'm angry. If I'm not angry, I'm not angry. Okay? Right. So, so if there might be a trigger of some, some maybe a p person may have triggered the behavior or the environment may be not suitable for this person. It can be because this environment, this person doesn't like loud, loud noises or whatever and this person is being placed in a place where there's a lot of uh, and the environment factors not suitable for, this, for him or her. So that, that triggered the behavior. 
So that is the, uh, the thing, but the knife thing is <laughs> very strange because I, we had one uh, incident, one case, and you know, this, this uh, Malay old lady, you know, she's very, very machik, you know, very machik, you know, okay, very family, family, and she loves children. And when she has dementia, uh, they, they, then she's dementia. And then there was one day, this, her children, uh, you know, uh, you know, brought back this little baby, which is a grandchild, you know, to the house, and they have a uh, you know, get together. And this old lady wants to hold the baby. What do you do? It's a baby, it's a very small one-month-old baby. Do you give the baby to the person? Do you not? Eventually, <laughs> they give her the baby, and she held it. So tenderly, so tenderly, because this is, this is the instinct that this is a baby and I, I look after babies, I used to look after babies and this is the instinct. So I always think that if the person, you know, we have that, that nat natural instincts in us, but we don't know it sometimes, uh, but I think our behaviours are always a, a reason for triggers. Some, some, some triggers will trigger us to behave in certain ways. And for a person with dementia, you know, I, I don't believe, I, I, for me, I, I believe that they, if they have aggression or anything, you know, I, ter I term it here aggression, but I think it's a response. Yeah. All right. Uh, the second question to this is, must we as uh, people living with dementia patients remind those with dementia what he or she has done wrong? Mm, okay, that means uh, uh, don't shower. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I, 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 it's um, okay. If we, from our experience, if you want to remind a person of something, then with talking with the person with dementia, you may need another, uh, you, you, you may need to communicate in a different way. For example, when, you, when, the, when they say, oh, uh, this is, okay, for example, if the person with dementia wants to, wants to use the, the rack, okay, as a towel for the face, okay, wrong, right, wrong, okay, wrong of our face, okay, but to the person with dementia, this is not wrong. This is something that is a piece of cloth that I want to use and you, why my face? Because my, I feel sweaty or whatever. So I want to use this piece of rag, a cloth to wipe my face. It's not wrong from the perspective of the person with dementia. But from our perspective, it's wrong because it's dirty. It's a rag. Right? So how do we change or how do we communicate in a way that they understand this is a piece of a dirty cloth? Well, we can always um, say that uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, this one is, uh, yes, it's, it's, of course, it's to wipe things, wipe your face, wipe our face, wipe the table, wipe everything. But let me change it for you so that you, have, you will have a more, uh, you, uh, you, this, the other piece of cloth is more comfortable for you. you no, know, we, we can always reframe uh, how we communicate, how we, you know, we, if we want to have a heads on, uh, <laughs> argument with the person with dementia, you're not going to win anyway, you know. Yeah. So it's almost taking a bird's eye view of seeing it from the other person's perspective yeah. as well. From their perspective, it's not wrong. Yes. Yeah. But from our socialized perspective, it's wrong, right? <laughs> so we can, you, okay, even if you want to change, I think yes, you can, but just, just use it, just change or communicate in a way that um, nobody's wrong, nobody's right. You just, we can do something that's... Give another different. alternative. Yeah, yes, yes, another alternative. All another right. way to make things, you know, happy ending for everybody. All right. Yes. Okay. Any other questions from the floor? No? If not, uh, thank you very much. Can you please give a big round of applause to your plate for sharing the story?